Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. you and also with you let us pray almighty and everlasting God you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. 
God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild things of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image, in the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you, with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth 
has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I had an experience the other night, this last week, of something sacred. As many of you know, we have a newborn in our home, and though she is small, she is mighty particularly when it comes to dictating her schedule to us. It was, therefore, a special moment of Sabbath and God's creation when I was able to get out on the mountain bike for a ride just before 8 p.m. one day this last week and to ride from the house over to DuPont State Forest. I was not sure what adventure awaited me, but I knew that it would be a clear night The moon was almost full, and I knew that I would not be back before dark. While the light was still good, I had some fun on the fast and flowy trails. As the sun set, I made my way over to High Falls, and from the covered bridge, I decided to ride down to the bottom of the falls, where I have not been for a long time. Dusk was settling in, and those Bright yellow fireflies flashed, showing me the way down hills and around corners and finally to the pool below the 125-foot cascade. I sat down on a rock and rested for a while. It was the first time in a long time that I felt grounded with all that has been going on in my life and in the world feeling the solidness of the rock beneath me, the warmth of a creator whose majesty shimmered in the moonlight and surrounded me on every side. The sun had set, but light shined forth. Fireflies continued to flicker as darkness settled in. Now blue ghosts faintly lined the forest floor. Fireflies and moonlight, the light shines in the darkness, the darkness overcomes it not. And then there was the wind, sometimes warm, sometimes cool, blowing off the top of the waterfall with mist landing on my face and my arms. Leaves moved by wind, shadows and light dancing on the rocks, rapids splashing in the breeze below. There I sat, completely grounded on this rock, a fingerprint of our Creator. The light of God visible right before my very eyes. The wind of God blowing and rearranging both me and the world around. This morning we celebrate Trinity Sunday a feast that celebrates the one and equal glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in trinity of persons and unity of being. Trinity Sunday is one of seven principal feasts of the church year, meaning that it bats in a lineup with heavy hitters like Christmas and Easter. Today we celebrate the mystery of the triune God. It makes me wonder as we gather what God as Trinity means to you. Do you find your life swept up into the relationship between the three persons of our God? Or is all this talk 
kind of odd, uncomfortable, or even confusing for you. In other words, what does the Trinity matter for our lives today? Well, how about this? How about we take simply a kernel of what we can say about the triune God, the basics that the church has midwifed to us, and we combine them with our experiences of God? I would suggest that if we do this, then we find that this ancient doctrinal mystery is not only relevant to us, but it's shaping us and molding us to know what is of God and what isn't. In the Trinity, God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we have a God who is, by God's very nature, first of all, relational. Yet in those relationships of the three, we find, secondly, equality. None is before or after, none is greater or less than. And thirdly, we find a remarkable and a perfect unity. We find not three gods, but one God. My suggestion to you this Trinity Sunday is that these things are most relevant to us and to our world. Our God is relational at God's core. With God's diversity of persons, we find complete equality. And along with equality comes divine unity or oneness. And I'm here to say on this Trinity Sunday that it matters a great deal for you and for me to be able to use words like relational, equality, and unity when we describe the God whom we know and love. Because if we say that God is relational, then we learn as ones created in God's image that we are relational too. Let's just say, hypothetically, of course, that you were to quarantine an entire society and tell them not to have people over, not to go out, not to hug, not to handshake, not to eat at restaurants, not to go to school, all of that. Now, this is hypothetical, of course, but if we tried to keep people apart for some reason, for weeks and for months, that we would find that a deep longing for relationship would bubble up within us. We would find people connecting without being physically together, connecting any way that they can. We would find people who are part of communities longing to see one another again. We might even find that our longing for relationships for companionship would mean that our hearts break to pieces when we witness moments of those relationships failing, when we hurt each other, when we kill one another, when people forget that we too are relational by our very nature, just like our God, and that there's no way to exist except with one another. Now we also find that God is three persons, but those three persons, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, are co-equal, and while distinct, they are in complete unity. Equality and unity in God's very self, which makes me wonder once again if God is trying to share with us something of human nature or at least who we might be if God were involved. If we were to push, if we were to prod and say, well, it must be that God the Father Almighty is in some way over the Son in the Spirit. Then you would find the great theologian of Nicaea, St. Athanasius, saying, no, sir. The Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, the Holy Ghost Almighty, and yet they are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. And if you were to push and you were to prod about humanity and say that there must be some people who are intrinsically worth more than others or who should be over others, then we could say undeniably that all people are created equally and endowed with certain unalienable rights. 
And it would not be a stretch to say that together we form one, a single humanity. There is unity in being a person. Or at least there should be. So we see in God's self relationship, equality, and unity. The three persons of the Trinity relate to each other this way, which is rather d different than how we relate to one another so often. We find in our relationships calculated manipulations. We find greed and fear and a sickness of self-promotion. We find that when we are rational, when we are relational, that these relationships are too easily characterized by prejudice against those who are different, those who look differently than us or speak differently or come from different places and backgrounds. We find relationships characterized by violence and the need for domination. But you do not find any of these in God. In our God's trinity of persons, you will find no manipulation or self-promotion. Neither will you find prejudice or violence within the heart of God. Instead, there is relationship, there is equality, there is unity. So now you can tell me if the Trinity matters for your life. Because it sounds like we very much need the Trinity in our lives and in our world. Relationship equality, unity, they sound divine to me. They sound like they matter now more than ever. And so I wish you a most holy and happy Trinity Sunday. Amen. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us join together in prayer for the church and the world saying, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. 
for our bishop, and for all the clergy and people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those elected to public office, that in this moment of crisis that they might prove themselves prudent stewards of the public resources, set aside self-interest, and dedicate themselves to serving the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those placed in harm's way through their service to the sick, especially doctors, nurses, medical technicians, and first responders. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the men and women in law enforcement and military services, that they will be safe on behalf of maintaining safety in public order. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the essential workers that are providing services to the hospitals, clinics, and providing services to all of us that are staying at home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are unemployed, for those who live in fear of being unemployed, their, that their anxious hearts might be quelled by acts of generosity and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Vanessa, Lori, Francis, Tom, for Sue, Nancy, and Kathy. We pray for Carolyn, Ernie, and Paul as well as for Tom, Ross Ann, and Harriet. Also for John, Sally, for Ann, Steve, and Dave, as well as for Nancy, Bob, for Mary Frances, and Mike. We pray for Joshua, Emily, Joanne, Robbie, and Carol. Also for Michael and Father Alex. Are there others? that Christ the Good Shepherd might intervene and grant them healing and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the pandemic might be stopped and all those who suffer may find comfort in our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With the unknowns that we face in the current crisis, lead us away from fear and anger by showing us your grace and comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the dead, for all those who have died from the coronavirus, and for Linda Sue Lowry. Are there others? Jerome Parley, Sue Shaw. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. As this is the 
first Sunday of June. We want to take a moment to celebrate and to pray for those who are having birthdays and anniversaries this month. We thank God for you and for your relationships. And we want to name you if, we, uh, if we're able. And you're welcome to type in names now if you're watching online and to, uh, to pray with us that way. We pray for Joanne and Clint Adams who celebrate 50 years of marriage this weekend. For birthdays, Becky Goodman, Hal Reed, David Christenberry, Jackie Hornsby, Tom Volante, Jenny McNeil, Ian McPherson, Skip Phillips, Dale Llewellyn, Gibson Sims Jr., Nelson Motes, Bridget Swing, Stephen Franks, Joe Cavaz, Jonathan Ward, Tom Green, Janet Smith, Tom Bullard, Catherine Harrell, Newell Dottie, Betty Orr, John Ball, Lucy Farr, Marlon Sanders, Mary Edwards, Susan Dobson, Alan Ward, Peter Frick, Sandra Jeffrey, Catherine G., Robin Howe, Rosanna Couture, Matthew Bullard. Let us pray. O God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants who are celebrating birthdays or wedding anniversaries this month. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We enter the time now when we would normally pass the offering plate around, which is a little bit hard to do these days. But we're so grateful for your continued generosity. It means so much to know that you're with us and, and doing God's work in the world through this parish church. You're welcome to go online to stjohnflatrock.org and to, to make an offering online. And we certainly appreciate that and your prayers at this time. As we walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice unto God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For your, with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink, of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though we cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that your church has received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your service through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us go forth into the world to serve through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.